Good morning everyone, we are at Marche Mufta which is sort of like a morning market of sorts and it's just located on this narrow little lane like cobblestone lane you can find fruits and some more fruits here you can find anything you can find uni you can find oysters you can find lobsters crab anything really that's seafood related and there are cheese shops and souvenir shops <laughs> as well as also some miscellaneous stuff there's a very kind lady right there you even got all sorts of restaurants uh, you have got some bistros you have got chinese food vietnamese food and we don't have this back in our country in malaysia so it's really interesting to see uh, this kind of setup this place is located slightly further away from the Notre Dame area, I think uh, towards the south. And we're actually heading over to have some brunch right now. We're going to have some crab. And apparently they serve some really good crab. They are called Au Petit Grec, which means the little Greek, I think. So anyway, let's head there right now. Okay guys, we got both a savoury one and a sweet one. I think the sweet one is a crab and the savoury is a galette. The difference between a crab and a galette is that crab I think is just uh, flour and, and galette is made with buckwheat flour if I'm not wrong. So, this is their classic uh, together with vegetables. So it's basically ham, cheese, you can see there's cheese on the side and then you've got ham in the middle. I think there's egg underneath and then you've got lettuce and tomatoes. And the other is obviously the fail-safe Nutella banana. I'm gonna let quite have this and I'm gonna start with this. I think we made a mistake, we should have bought both <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> now I need to really speed this up, so let's go. Okay, this is really huge. Mm. Okay, I get why this is something that people kill for. Very simple flavours, but the flavours immediately hit. You get the cheesiness and then the saltiness from the cheese. And you get the ham texture, the ham saltiness. Mm. And the pancake outside, there's these crispy edges, but the middle is still sort of, you know, a little bit chewy. Mm. Now I should take a second bite. The vegetables, they provide a crunchiness to sort of cut back on the heaviness of the cheese. It's a very hearty tasting glad. And when it's wrapped up in this way, it's really very street food feeling. And just, just look at this guys. Look at this over here. So that, that's the crisp. That is the crisp. That's the crisp I'm talking about. Okay, I'm gonna go in for another bite because it's just so huge. Mm. The deeper you go, the better it becomes. Yeah. Oh, the ingredients are there together, mingling with one another. Mm, there's even mushrooms in there, you could taste the mushroom umami. I don't remember how much this is, this is like what, 5 euros maybe? 5, 6 euros? Mm. Delicious. Simple, delicious, amazing. Mm. Mm. Oh, the galette is salty. And I can taste that there's definitely a different flavor. It's probably the buckwheat flavor. Really, really nice. Perfect. I think a uh, savory start for the day. Mm, that crispiness. Mm. Recommended. Um, we have had another fried place, collab place before. Pretty well known chain. This is much better. Uh, I'm gonna let quite do the Nutella first um, before it, you know, <laughs> it's bad. Okay, here we go. Now, notice this is not brown as the galette. Maybe because of bark weight, there's a bark weight, and this is a normal crab. And the surface is not crispy than the other one. This is more softer type, like the pancake. Mm. Nutella banana never go wrong. You could taste the Nutella and also the banana sweetness. The crab is slightly salty and with a draw fragrance and the crab texture is slightly chewy and soft and you can see they also give you a lot of banana and Nutella mm. So guys, we're gonna finish this up So you recommend it, it's really good yeah. For street food, you want to eat uh, galette and crab This is the place so we're gonna finish this up and then we're gonna do a quick like visit to a couple of places and then later on we're having dinner and it's gonna be a souffle. So see you guys in a bit. This is the Pantheon of Paris. <laughs> Oh, 
The Fendi is a historical monument that the French used to, I think, remember and entomb the people who they consider as the heroes of France. So you got all sorts of really popular people, maybe probably like some authors, uh, maybe poets, uh, even I think one of the past uh, French presidents. I don't know much about the history and also personally, I do not really have much of an interest to visit this place. You gotta pay to enter. So there you go, I will show you a slight view of the outside of the Pantheon. And there's also like an area where you could sit by at the side and have your lunch while you marvel at this architecture. So that is a really quick touch and go on the Pantheon of Paris. On to the next spot. We are now in the Luxembourg Garden and it's a really really huge garden. It's located right in front of the I think Luxembourg Palace where the current French Senate sits. And because we came during a winter, right? So obviously all the trees are more or less bald. You don't see much, I believe, uh, maybe during the summer or during the spring, it will look way better. They have got a lot of statues surrounding this area and each statue has its own description. Maybe there's a story behind but it's in French. So you probably gotta Google translate that. Yeah. And right in the middle is actually sort of like a pond with a fountain and people are just sitting around maybe enjoying a sandwich or something but it's beginning to rain as you can tell from my specs. So yeah, people are actually packing up. Today is really not a great day to be filming. Anyway, we're gonna take a quick look around and then we'll head to that dinner. See you guys in a bit. Alright guys, we are now seated in the restaurant which is called Le Cuisine de Philippe and they are very well known apparently for their souffle and the reason why we are here for dinner is because for us to savour their lobster based souffle and a dark chocolate souffle they only serve it for dinner and I gotta say this is a really uh, uh, like quaint small little restaurant it looks like it's very traditional very home run and as you enter you have got a very interesting painting on the ceiling and they have very interesting paintings hung on their walls and it seems that this restaurant probably has been operating for a really really long time and it does give you that very interesting vibe to it. So we have been served with their menu and uh, you basically have a few choices. You either go for a starter with a main dish and a dessert for 45 euros or if you're not a big eater, just go with a starter with a main dish or a main dish with a dessert for 39 euros. Since we had a pretty heavy brunch today, one of us is going to pick a starter with a main plate and the other person is going to pick a main plate with a dessert. Right guys, of course you can never start any French meal without bread and we've just been served with a fresh basket of bread. I believe these are baguettes. Let us start by trying out one. Mm. It's one of the better ones. Immediately you can tell there's a flower fragrance that baguette has. And I like how the outside is crusty, but the inside is soft and chewy. I have it Yep, definitely one of the better ones in Paris, for sure. <laughs> right guys, so this was really quick. The first starter is here, the lobster beef souffle, and it's really piping hot. You can see how it just jiggles as you turn the plate. Oh my god. One second, one second, look at this guys. Look at this guys. See that? Okay, I can't wait. I'm gonna just quickly poke my spoon into the souffle and just dig it. Oh, it's so soft. Okay, let's go. Oh. Mm. It's sort of, you know, it's, it's very air bubbly tasting, very soft, almost cream like, and it just dissolves in your mouth the moment you put it in. And the lobster's flavor is not overly strong, but it's definitely there. You can tell the lobster umami is a very savory, really savory souffle. It's my first time having a savory souffle. It's very interesting. The top is toasted, it's got that bouncy, that, that nearly slightly chewiness. The texture almost tastes like a Korean steam egg, you know, there's this like air bubbles within the Korean steam egg. It's very, very similar. But on the top, you add that chewy texture. This is what the texture is about. Mmm. Mmm. Yup. 
some of the combination it sort of screws your mind a little bit because you're like it's a souffle it should be sweet and then this is like a savory type it's you know it's salty savory it's a really interesting flavor Mm. Okay, I gotta say though, as you take bite after bite, after the initial surprise due to the texture, then you start noticing a little bit of like a shortcoming of the dish. I think the lobster piece, the, the, the flavor is not uh, robust enough, probably because it's made into a souffle. And, and after you get past that, that surprising texture, it gets a little bit boring after a while. But still, I would say a very interesting starter dish. And I definitely have not had a savory souffle in my life. This is my first time ever. Alright guys, uh, mains are here. So I got the Kok Uvan, which is uh, a red wine stewed chicken. It's similar, I believe, to beef bourguignon, just that this is chicken instead of beef. And it comes with a side of mashed potatoes. So let's quickly stir it up and see what it looks like. Let's grab a spoon. And I think on the top here, this is a piece of onion and probably some maybe chives. Uh, let's remove this and look at the chicken underneath. Mm. Okay, the sauce. Okay, let's just grab a bit of that chicken uh, together with that sauce oh it's quite a huge piece okay let's grab this onto the plate okay I believe this is a piece of chicken thigh and I've gotten this specific knife that they provided me with to cut open the chicken I'm assuming so let's go I can't wait to try this okay let's prep the chicken Cut it down. Ooh, ooh, nice, very nice. There we go, this piece right here. Mmm. Mmm. The chicken is tender, but it has a very nice bite to it. This is a good piece of chicken. The flavor is. Okay, I'm gonna make a comparison to um, the beef bourguignon in Dumare. I think it's easier that way. The red wine flavor not as strong, more acidity to it, and there's a salty savoriness to it, but not too salty. It doesn't taste too salty yet. Let me try to dab a little bit more of that chicken into that sauce. Mm. <clears throat> Chicken is really good. You could taste the natural flavor of the chicken, you know? It's like a good beef has a very natural beef flavor. The good type, this chicken has that. Good flavor, good bite. It doesn't even taste fat, to be honest. It's a Thai pot, but it doesn't taste fat. It's tender too. Chicken is done very well. The sauce, I'm not too sure how to feel about it. Um, because it's my first time uh, having this dish, to be honest. So I do not know. I'm not going to pretend that I know. But it's very interesting in flavor compared to the Dumare uh, beef bourguignon. Mm. I love the chicken. Starting to enjoy the tanginess, the acidity now. I'm gonna try a little bit of that mashed potato. Mm. This is the good type. Not the gourmet type, but a very good homemade type. Pasty, a little bit like graininess within. Peppery, butter. Simple, delicious. I really enjoy this. This is enjoyable. Okay, my turn. This is my first time having Lavelli Langostine. It looks very beautiful. Then there is some veggie on the top. This is the Lavelli. It looks like a dumpling. It's a Chinese dumpling. Mm. Mm. It tastes like our Chinese Sui Gao dumpling, but the skin more firm. It has a nice chill and bouncy, and you can taste the langoustine as good in your mouth. It has a very robust prawn flavor, and the flesh is tender, yet it has a nice chill. They use the langoustine to cook the sauce. It tastes prawniness, sweetness and savoury. Mm. I don't know why it's the middle. It looks like tofu. Let's try. It tastes like tofu. Yeah, the texture looks just like tofu. Soft, airy and a lot of air bubbles. Mm. Veggie, as usual, fresh and sweet, and nice crunch. Mm. 
you. Okay, this is here. This is the moment I'm waiting for. I'm so excited. It's not as bouncy as I expected. But now I, let's try. It's soft. I could smell the chocolate fragrance. Mm. The middle is like a chocolate sauce. It's a dark chocolate sauce. The balance between the sweet and the bitter is very well balanced. Let me try to get the souffle together with the hot chocolate. Mm. The souffle texture is very airy, soft, and the surface there's a little bit resistant. And once you break in, there's a lot of chocolate sauce. I'm not so sure whether there's inject some chocolate sauce in. Actually, it just tastes like a lava cake in souffle texture and the body. After a few bites, it tastes a bit oversweet, so I do suggest to share. Okay, we'll finish this and see you later for the clean time. Okay guys, it's, it's playing time. time! And we are actually back at the hotel right now um, because after we finished uh, the dinner at Philippe, it was really late and because we yeah, were walking, walking home, yeah, and it's quite a journey so we rushed back to be safe. <laughs> anyway, let's start with Oo Petit Greg. Absolutely delicious. Galette and crab. The galette is very hearty. It's a very big portion, I would say very value for money. And it's absolutely a street food style. Very no frills, fresh ingredients. Everything mixed well. Yeah, everything is mixed very well. The flavors are very exciting and it's very simple, very non-pretentious. Mm. It's absolutely enjoyable. Uh, when you grab it and it's hot and you're eating it in a cold winter day, oh, that, that was mm. the greatest, one of the greatest feelings of a street food, really. Mm. Yeah, and of course the crab is a no-brainer. I mean, honestly, Nutella banana. <laughs> and it's more... Never it's, wrong. Yeah, it, it's never wrong. And, yeah. and because their, their crabs and their galettes have their own flavours as well, I think that is mm. extremely important. Mm. I, I really say absolutely recommend it. Like, it's a no-brainer. You know, if you're around that area, like even if you're in Notre Dame area, just, just take the extra, I think, what, 20 minutes walk? And just go. And, and, and you don't grab a galette and a crab. And with that being said, Old Petit Greg scores a half a plate on the gourmet plate, which means it is some high quality galette and crab right there. Again, I cannot stress it, I've absolutely recommended. It. It's just good, like, it's a street food, it's, it's really good. Mm. Yeah, And you can really tell by the queue on a weekday, mm. and most of them are not even tourists. Now, about Philippe, it's a little bit more complicated mm. compared to Old Petit Greg. So let's go dish by dish. Starting with the lobster beef souffle. As I mentioned, it's really a very interesting flavour. But I think the issue for us is that after you get past the initial novelty of the idea, it gets boring real quick because the lobster beef flavour is not very, very strong. Maybe because it's in a souffle format. So, so it tends to like maybe soften the flavour quite significantly. So all in all, I would say it is a pretty decent starter and if you have not had savory souffle before you know why not give it a try mm. now the main course uh, the coke uvan is my first time having it so i'm gonna again see from a first timer perspective it's very interesting because uh, this compared to the beef bourguignon that we had at du marais was slightly different this has a more present and forward acidity less wine taste mm -hmm. but i really love the chicken the chicken is done really well the sweetness of the chicken is so present and the chicken thigh is very tender except the, the chicken yeah, breast yeah except the chicken breast unfortunately they, they were really tough lah. Uh, I'll be honest, it is tough. It's, it's difficult to eat. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, eventually I quite enjoyed the sauce, but it was more acid heavy. So let me know if that is how a cooked uvan should be like, or is there a balance in flavor to it? Mm. Yeah. And the ravioli, probably the star of the night. Yeah, definitely, I agree. Hands down. Yeah. The ravioli is cooked very well, have a very good texture, and the langoustine flavor is very umami. Mm. And the sauce, the prawny flavor is very present. Mm. And the consistency of the sauce is very good. Not too thick and not too watery. Yeah, I would mm. say the flavor, actually, the combination of flavor is very harmonious and very bad. And probably the most balanced and most harmonious dish of the night, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, and also the crunchy from the veggie give you a mm. very extra bite texture. Yeah, yeah, definitely the most enjoyable dish of the night. Mm. A very remarkable dish. Yep. Yeah. And for the dark chocolate souffle, the souffle texture is done pretty well and the chocolate is pretty present. 
I would say it's a, it's a relatively rich chocolate mm. flavour. Not the most bitter, mm -hmm. but it's rich because I think they pumped chocolate sauce in the middle. Yeah, yeah so all in all, it's, it's a pretty enjoyable uh, chocolate souffle. And if you are a lover of chocolate, I think you will probably very much enjoy this. Yeah. Yeah. And after taking all the dishes into consideration, we will say Philip scores an okay on the gourmet plate, which means it's some good quality culinary mm. right there. I think the main issue lies with the overly tough chicken breast and the less exciting mm, starter. Mm. Yeah. But other than that, really, really enjoyable. So there you have it. <laughs> I guess that's it for mm. our food vlog for the week. Hope you have enjoyed this particular food episode. If you did, do consider giving us a thumbs, thumbs up. up. If you have yet to subscribe, do consider subscribing <laughs> and hit that notification bell button. Till we eat again next week. Bye, yep. bye bye. It's actually really late right now. Like nearing 1 a.m. We are gonna sleep. Mm. Fine. Good night.